The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. What's up, besties? This is episode 17 magazine of Child Like a Best with Mike Valdez. Hey, guess what? I'm still the second part of that title. Before we get the show rolling, I had a couple of stand-up dates and music dates that I wanted you guys to know about. Miami, I will be at the Last Call Comedy Show on September 24th at Concrete Beach Brewing. That show is at 8 p.m. Fort Lauderdale, I will be at Next Door C&I with my band, Mike Valdez and the Noise. We're going to be playing a whole bunch of music, so make sure that you know all of our songs. Listen to Mike Valdez and the Noise, Dreamer on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you listen to albums. It's going to be such a fun show, and we can't wait to make noise with you. And finally, Orlando. I will be at the Geek Easy on October 3rd. For more info or details on these shows, you can just go to my Instagram, at Mike Valdez, or my Twitter, at I am Mike Valdez. There's going to be posters and event links for all that kind of stuff. This episode is my buddy Lance Brooks. Lance has a podcast called The Strong Style Podcast, which is a wrestling podcast. I met this guy a couple of years ago at an Anchor Collective show, and honestly, I just love this guy. He's one of those guys that you can just talk to for hours on end about things just because his knowledge is so vast in everything pop culture and fashion and all these kinds of things, and you'll get to listen to a lot of that as well. Also, if you're into wrestling, you should definitely subscribe to his podcast, The Strong Style Podcast. You would love it. So without further ado, please enjoy my buddy, Lance Brooks. Hey, everybody. This is Child Like It Best with Mike Valdez. Hey, guys, guess what? I'm Mike Valdez, and today I have a very special guest with me. Lance Brooks. How's it going, guys? What's up, dude? Not much, man. It's been so long since we've seen each other. Yeah. It's been like a year or two, something like that? Something like two, yeah. Holy cow. We met at, a, at an Anchor Collective show. Yeah. And we had one of those like conversations that lasted for like hours on end. Yeah, it was weird. It was like probably like three or four hours after yeah. we had already like left the restaurant. Yeah. So we were just staying <laughs> in the parking lot. Yeah. Well, the first thing we like to do here at Child Like It Best, before I get anything started, is we like to have a Flintstones vitamin. Sweet. So I have these Flintstone Complete Gummies for you. So what I've noticed is that everybody that tries these gets one of the kids. Yeah. Like, I'm aiming for, like, Fred <laughs> or... Yes! Fred or This Barney makes me so happy. <laughs> it annoys me that every time it's, it's like, It's always Pebbles. Pebbles. <laughs> It is always Pebbles, And dude. even if it's Bam Bam, I think people might just think it's Pebbles because yeah. it's a baby. That's very accurate. Is this the Kool-Aid man? <laughs> I mean, that would be awesome. Damn Pebbles. <laughs> I might have to eat another one. I of told you, dude. Out. It is like... It's like 70% Pebbles in here. It's just so I, much Pebbles. It's like a construction site. <laughs> That's awesome. So, as you're taking that, can you tell me about where you grew up? Well, that ends up being a longer story than I intend to tell, but uh, I initially grew up in Detroit, Um, so don't let the southern accent fool you. Uh, For the first 12 years of my life, I grew up in Detroit, and then after that, I moved to St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands for like two years, and then jumped from a polar opposite of those two places and moved to western Florida. Right. (laughs) When you were growing up, though, what kind of kid would you say that you were? Like, what kind of person did you hang out with at the lunch table, that kind of thing? Well, in Detroit, I didn't really hang out with anybody. Cause, okay. Well, kind of, yes and no. Yeah. Because initially, in Detroit, I was very different from the rest of the people there. Just sure. in the sense that, like, my mom was very, like, strict on me as far as, like, what I could and couldn't listen to. And, like, even as, like, seven-year-olds, these kids were listening to, like, oh, I Lil know. Wayne and Hot Boys and stuff like that. You're on the right podcast. <laughs> my first CDs were Will Smith, Sync. Dude, my first CD was Michael W. Smith. <laughs> well. Like, it wasn't even Will Smith. It was Michael W. Smith. I mean, that's kind of two steps away from each other in the grand scheme of things. A little bit, yeah. No cursing is the overall. (laughs) That's very true. And so that in itself, but also being 
mixed in Detroit in the 90s was not something that people were. Really? Yeah, no. Detroit was very segregated until, like, I think last Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, um, well, that's what I was going to say is, like, I'm pretty sure there's, like, a lot of mixed people there now because yeah, of basketball I mean, teams. Gentrification. And, like, different... Yeah, gentrification. Uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing, um, yeah. especially for Detroit. But my grandmother's from France. Okay. So uh, I grew up spending a lot of my mornings with her. Okay. And uh, speaking French, which I don't really do too much now, and drinking coffee and eating bread. Really? <laughs> yeah, that was like the French breakfast. So at like okay. three, I'm drinking coffee and cream of wheat. You know what's funny? I remember that when I was a kid, one of my favorite things about going to church, because when you're a kid and you have to go to church, you kind of see it as like, I don't want to go and, you know, whatever. Can I stay home? Exactly. Can I stay home and blah, blah, blah. But I found that whenever I went to church, they would have, sometimes they'd have pastries or cookies or like bread or whatever. What church did you go to? We got <laughs> communion wafers. That's about it. I was well, so Well, I went, not only did I go to a Baptist church, I oh, went okay. to a Spanish Baptist church, which means that everybody's going to give you uh, pastelitos and like all these oh, different okay. kinds of things. So there was that. And then that's how I started my addiction with coffee. And that was like at eight years old. No lie. Yeah. That well, addiction just, is real. It's so crazy, man. I and no one ever stopped me. Yeah. I remember the day I burned my tongue on a caramel macchiato. <laughs> and I couldn't have been more than like eight. <laughs> I was walking around the mall just like crying, but like so satisfied at the same time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's awesome. But I did have like my best friend in Detroit. Uh, okay. And we're still actually friends to this day. I was talking to him. That's awesome. I want to say yesterday and okay it's been like 25 years we've been friends holy cow yeah so that's crazy and when did you move to florida i moved to florida my freshman year of high school so okay well that's and three that's like a big leap actually like yeah. to change schools entirely and yeah, change I, states but before that i was in st thomas so it yeah. was a very it was very different even from that because i went from like an island that's right. basically just a mountain where movies came out on Thursdays. And okay. <laughs> it's just, it, that thing, that sticks with me to this day. I'm like, they got there late, and then they got there on a Thursday. It was just like... That's strange. It, it was so bizarre. Is it because of a time difference or something? No, I don't think so. I think that it was just because it's such a small island, they got stuff later. Oh, like, okay. I don't know. They were probably still just like behind <laughs> a little bit. Sure. But yeah, and like, they they only had... Yeah, only had McDonald's and didn't have Burger King. There's like little differences like that. I felt like it was like the Twilight Zone a little bit. It it kind of is. Because even in the Twilight Zone, McDonald's still exists. Exactly. (laughs) But, um, and then, so from there, I went to Florida. Mm -hmm. And again, so different. I went from this tiny island to like the largest school in the country. At the time, Cyprus had 5,000 kids. Holy cow. Yeah, and so many so that ninth graders had to go to an annex where there was just, like, portables. It was, like, a trailer wow. park for school. Was that a public or a private school? Yeah, public. I've okay. done, as far as schools, a little bit of everything. Sure. Montessori, public, private, magnet. What did they do at magnet school that's I mean, different? It's kind of just, like, regular public school, except you wear weird color uniforms. Well, that's basically private school. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's open. To, they do like a raffle or something to say who okay. can go. It's so weird. It's like you can go to school and you can go to school yeah. like Oprah. But it, yeah, it's like Hogwarts, except you don't learn anything cool. Exactly. <laughs> we literally had all of the same classes, except like extracurricular act, like clubs and stuff. Like we had wrestling, which okay. in Detroit, nobody did amateur wrestling. Sure. Like they had a lot of sports that nobody else in Detroit was playing. So we didn't have very much competition. That's awesome. So, yeah. like, you, I'm, I'm assuming, like, actual wrestling. Amateur not, wrestling, not, yeah. <laughs> not like, yeah, my dad is all there. I mean, <laughs> I trained a little bit, but, yeah, sure. mostly amateur wrestling. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, and I always say that, like, my parents were secretly trying to train me up to be a pro wrestler. Uh-huh. Because I did amateur wrestling and then, like, improv comedy stuff and acting stuff. So, it's like putting all those pieces together to equal a pro wrestler. That actually all does make the equation for a pro wrestler. It re- yeah. I feel like there are moments where I, like, hulk out wrestler mode. Mm-hmm. And then I have to remi- remind myself, Lance, you can't clothesline someone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So... When you went home, what were your fandoms, essentially? Like, what were your favorite TV shows, movies, that kind of stuff? 
Well, as far as cartoons, mm-hmm. the thing that really drew me in was the Batman animated series. Sure, dude. Like, that was my show. That was my uh, life. Yeah. I had all of the action figures. I even had this one Robin that had my dad and my mom and dad called it the high top fade Robin. <laughs> Because the top of his head was, like, really square yeah. like, and flat. <laughs> the kid so play Robin. It, it was. <laughs> and when I tell people about this, they look at me like I'm crazy. No. And then I finally found it, like, at Tate's. And I'm like, I, I couldn't compose Dude, myself. I'm like, oh, huh, my gosh. Have you seen the mold of Robin from Batman Returns? It was the mold that they made while the movie was being made, but this was when Tim Burton wanted Robin to be in the movie, and it was going to be played by Marlon Wayans. I have not seen that, but so I a, wish that happened So very there's much a, so now. a mold of this Robin that straight up looks like Marlon Wayans. So is this Marlon Wayans' era of, like, Wayans Brothers with the, like, the crazy hair? Or yeah, Or is it, like, exactly. G.I. Joe Marlon Wayans? No, no, no. That's, like, the Wayans Brothers show. And... But here's the thing. They found out later on, oh, he's not going to be in it, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so they painted all of it white. So it straight up just looks it's like just Marlon, Marlon Wayans. Wayans and yeah, white. it's and white chicks Marlon Wayans dressed up as Robin. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Why did this not become a thing? I need this now. It's crazy, dude. It's so rare. But if you find it, it's like it's worth like a million dollars. <laughs> I imagine this looking like Basquiat, but Robin at the same time. Because Dude, the hair. I almost want, you know what? I'm going to look this up, but I just want to show you. So I don't seem insane right now. It is uncanny how much he looks like him. So Exactly, look. that's High Top Fade Robin. <laughs> is that what it is? That's High Top Fade Robin. Dude, High Top Fade Robin is Marlon Wayans. <laughs> what the crap? Because look, someone actually colored it the way it was supposed to. Straight up looks like Marlon Wayans. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> it's straight up Marlon Wayans. So I had that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's High Top Fade Robin. <laughs> I'm so proud of myself for knowing that I had the Marlon Wayans Robin that's, now. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Batman the Animated Series was such a dope show, man. It still is. Of course. Because it's, it's so, like, as a kid, you're just like, okay, this is Batman. I love this. Mm-hmm. But, like, you didn't realize, like, the actual storylines are, like, really good. Well, Something that a lot of people, especially like, and I feel like an old man saying this, but like some some of these kids don't realize. Kids know? these days don't kids realize. Kids these days don't realize that Harley Quinn was created for Batman the Animated yeah. Series. And, and now they, she's in movies and everyone's, you know, is in love with Harley Quinn, which you should be. She's a great character. On Halloween. Yeah, but, but she's a great character and you should love her, but it was created for that specific purpose. Yeah. Like Mr. Freeze was a stupid character until Batman the Animated Series. And now he has, like, depth, and you almost feel bad for him as a character, but... And they only, like, scratch the surface in Batman and Robin with that storyline, which is kind of the reason why it kind of makes me... With Arnold? Yeah, with Arnold. (laughs) It kind of makes me upset, because he's by far... Like, at least in my opinion, it's him and uh, Edward Nygma have, like, the coolest backstory... I mean, of course, the Joker's great, but the Joker's just mayhem. I mean, and the Joker can be literally whatever you want him to be, because his backstory is so convoluted and hidden at the same time. Dude, I need to tell you something, and I really hope that you understand how funny I think it is. But I realized something last night, because I was looking at all my different... I, I have, like, a bunch of different serials for different episodes and things. And, you know, just to talk a little bit into the future... I don't know what guest I'm going to use this serial for, but I have the Joker from Suicide Squad serial. And I wanted it to be with like some sort of an actor because I, the joke that I wanted to make was nothing makes people more upset than a new actor playing the Joker. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And so I was like, now I, this is your chance to be the Joker. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, they're uh, like, for example, they're making all these remakes, like they're making the remake with Little Mermaid and she's going to be African-American and all this stuff. And then I which makes me so happy because it makes people so angry, dude. OK, we'll go off on that in a minute. Yeah. But but <laughs> but then I, I was like, I wonder why there's like not a minority version of the Joker, you know, like there's no African-American Joker or there's no I wish Latin. there was like an Asian Joker. Dude, that would be so you know, bizarre. 
But then I started laughing because I was like, oh, he has to be white because everything he does is the epitome of white people. Yeah. <laughs> now that you make me think about Isn't it. Isn't that true? It's very true. He's the epitome of white people. And he gets away with a lot. <laughs> I know. So, yeah. He, I can... He's the only character that literally has to be white. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like Batman could be anything. Like any character could be anything. Now, yeah, Black Joker he, goes to jail like immediately. Exactly. He has to be a white guy. Yeah. There's no way it'll work if he's anything else. Like it's crazy. But going into like the Little Mermaid, that also makes me so happy as well. She can't be black. She can swim. Yeah. Like the things that you hear, because, like people say. I'm it's just like, oh my gosh. It, I mean, that's only partially true. I only know a lot well, of the people thing, I can't swim. <laughs> the thing. The thing that made me laugh was I was like, you know, oh, she can't be, she can't be black. And it's like, well, her best friend was Jamaican. Exactly. <laughs> like, what do you want? What, and like, on top of that, she's a cartoon. Yeah. So she, can, also, she can be purple. Yeah. And nobody also, would mermaids that. don't exist. Exactly. So the only thing that's real is Eric exactly. in that, in that whole movie. And then if it's like, isn't she supposed to be like Dutch or something like that? I don't know. But. There are like a lot of black Dutch people. Yeah. It's crazy. Like Alistair Overeem, the Dude. MMA fighter, that guy is like very much so not a white Dutch person. First of all, I'm assuming that most of the people that are upset are Americans, and most Americans are very ignorant. The funny it part about that, it, so. it's mostly guys. And in my head, I'm like, why? It, that's I funny. haven't seen that movie until like, like, I don't think I've ever seen The Little Mermaid in full. Really? I don't think I love that movie. I love, like, my Disney movies that really latched on me hard were Aladdin and Lion King. Same here. And so, like... Doesn't mean I don't like the princess movies, though, but those are my favorite, for sure. Like, the princess movies, because, like... They're made for girls, I get it. Yeah, exactly. So, like, at that age, like, when a lot of those movies were coming... Well, Little Mermaid, I wasn't, I don't think, quite born. Yeah. I was, like, kind of (laughs) born. I don't think I was even old enough to see that movie in the theater. Yeah. I think I was the I think the only movie I remember seeing in the theater because I was old enough to see it was The Lion King. Oh, I remember seeing Lion King. Yeah, I, I remember was in, like, seeing Kindergarten. And I Yeah, I was young too. Yeah. I yeah. remember it just because like it, our whole class went. Oh, like, really? Yeah, they were like we're taking the kids to see Lion King. And I was like I was so excited. <laughs> I was little 5-year-old Lance was no losing his mind. Although, like, looking back at that movie, I don't know. I was scared of everything, so I don't know how I wasn't terrified by, like, Scar and Be Prepared. Like, yeah, I should have probably been a lot more terrified than I actually was. I don't think I got scared either. I definitely remember being sad when Mufasa died, which, spoiler alert. My (laughs) my emotions at that age were all over the place in the sense... That, like, the stuff that wasn't supposed to scare me like that did scare me. And the yeah. stuff that was supposed to scare me, I was not phased by at all. Like, I saw Jurassic Park in theaters yeah. with my dad because he always took me to the things I had no business seeing in the movies, like Mortal Kombat <laughs> and stuff like That's, that. That movie is the most 90s movie of all time. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, I could not watch Thriller to save my life. Really? Until I was, like, 12. That's crazy. Thriller, for whatever reason, I think part of it was just Michael Jackson. I mean, but yeah. But the other part was, like, <laughs> Thriller was legitimately terrifying to me. Like, I remember we had this videotape called Moonwalker. Yeah, I remember And it that. had, like, little flashes of Thriller, and whenever it would come on. Yeah, wasn't that the movie that they made? It, it was a movie that they made. he turned into a spaceship? Exactly, yeah. yeah. It was a movie they made to, like, promote that album, right? Or the album after Thriller or something? I think so. I think it was the one after Thriller because it was it was bad. Yeah, it was bad. The ba- yeah, because it was bad. um he did the one video where he turned into a little kid because of the smoke, yeah. and then the little kid Michael Jackson with the, the hair. It's just so funny because you know you hear all these things about Michael Jackson now, and it's like, how did we not see that? Like, like it's I mean, so obvious just talking about these videos, <laughs> and then we're like, nah, nothing weird is going on at all. You know? I mean. <laughs> I, I'm very on the fence with it because I'm like, sure, realistically, it probably did happen. Sure. At the end of the day, I'm like, people get so outraged by things, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to let other people's outrage stop me from enjoying a Dave Chappelle special or Chick fil A. <laughs> or Chick fil A. 
I'm a, they could come out and say, I don't like Lance Brooks personally, and I'm still going to go there and get my four piece. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny, man. So you had Batman the Animated Series. What other television shows were you into? Well, since I was four, WWE Superstars. Yeah. I think that's what it was called. It was the Sat- or WWF Superstars. Yeah. It was like this show that came on Saturday mornings. Was it a cartoon? No, it was like their, like, it was a weird, like, show where there would occasionally be a wrestler that you know, mm-hmm. but most of the time it was just a bunch of random guys that nobody's heard of. Yeah. Like, well, people have heard of him, but, like, he's what they call a jobber, the Brooklyn Brawler. Yeah, he's yeah. He's just this guy who loses every match and wears ripped up New York Yankees t-shirts. It, it's Man. a very strong gimmick. I know that you're huge into wrestling. You actually have a wrestling podcast. I do. Right? It's called the Strong Style Podcast. Exactly. Which is awesome. It's super great. It's just you ranting about wrestling. For like an hour. Yeah. yeah. And, and what's great is it's just you. <laughs> and you're like getting mad about wrestling and no one's with you. So it's exactly. just. Exactly. <laughs> you're fighting your own this demons. This is my head, but I just like opened up like a valve to Yeah. Let it you're out. like wrestling yeah. with your own mind on the exactly. podcast for an hour. It's awesome. And so. <laughs> I don't know if you remember any of this, but in the 90s, they were so into putting, which they're kind of into it now, but they were so into putting wrestlers into in movies. Oh, like Thunder in Paradise? Yeah, Yeah. and Suburban Commando and Mr. Nanny. Or like, I think in, uh, I think it was in um, Suburban. Mr. Uh, Mr. Nanny. Yeah. Uh, I think The Undertaker was like a random space biker. That's in Suburban Commando. Suburban Commando, yeah. Yeah. But it's I'm like, so weird The Undertaker because... has always been in gimmick except for that movie. Man, let me tell you, the cast of these movies, if I like list it off, you're, you're just like, wow, that's like a great cast, but the movies were awful. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Like Suburban Commando. I don't Commando. think anybody watched Suburban Commando for Hulk Hogan's like... Oscar chops. winning like, <laughs> movies or acting skills. Yeah, it's so it's it's Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, and then Christopher Lloyd, and oh, then right. the, the uh, dad, right? yeah, and his wife is I can't remember her name, but she's she's Jack Nicholson's wife in The Shining. Oh oh oh, so she's um uh, phenomenal actress, Olive Oil from the Popeye yeah from movie. the Popeye movie, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good old olive oil. And uh, and then Mr. Nanny has freaking, I forget his name. That's Hulk Hogan too, right? Yeah, that's with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And then uh, the guy that plays George Jefferson. Oh, Sherman name? Helmsley. Dude, I have a Sherman so... Helmsley story. What is that story? Okay, so in Detroit, there's this, um, like, our famous building. It's called the Renaissance Center. Uh-huh. And it has a hotel. Okay. And uh, I was with my mom in Detroit at this hotel for some reason. I think we probably left already. Yeah. And then we got in the elevator, and I just see this giant, shiny head, Mm -hmm. like, lower than my eye level. And I I could have been more than, like, 13, so I was probably under five feet tall. Yeah. And I just see this shiny Martian-like head from the top. (laughs) And then I turn, and then as it gets off the elevator, it's Sherman Helmsley. And I'm like, this guy has the biggest circumference of a head that I've ever seen in my life. And it's just funny to me, because, like, head jokes are, like, two-thirds of, like, all of the material I have. Really? Because <laughs> I have a really big head, as yeah. most of my family does. My uncle wears, like, an eight and hat. Oh, my gosh. So, like, I'm used to that. But then my stepdad has, like, the smallest head. Right. So, like, he, he and I will go back and forth for, like, hours. Like, we had dinner, uh, like, two or three weeks ago. Yeah. And I had so much material that I was just like texting him extra head jokes like after we <laughs> left. I'm like, oh yeah, by the way. <laughs> just because like that's our relationship. We just dog each other out about our heads. That's hilarious. So you saw George Jefferson waddle up like a penguin to the elevator. <laughs> and I didn't recognize him at first, but then when I saw, like his head was interesting because he has like, you know, the cul-de-sac haircut. He does. <laughs> and then like his head was just so shiny in the middle portion that it kind of like glamored me. I was just sitting there like looking at this guy's head. Yeah. And then we got off the elevator. I'm like, that's George Jefferson. That's hilarious. My mom's like, you didn't know that when he walked towards you, Lance? I'm like, I had to see the top of his head. I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. What other movies were you into growing up? Will Smith movies. First of all, I'm like super fan Fresh Prince. Like, sure, me too, man. That's one of my favorite sitcoms. He called me on the phone when I was six years old. Will Smith called yeah. you on the phone? Well, 
I, I forgot to preface this. Okay, so well, my, why didn't we start with this story, Liz? So my aunt <laughs> it was on Fresh Prince for like a couple of years. Well, my mom's best friend. I call her my aunt. Right. She was on Fresh Prince for a couple of years. She's a actress, Nia Long. She was Lisa, his girlfriend. No way, dude. Yeah. So she was great too. Yeah, she was. She worked really well with him. Yeah, they were awesome together. Yeah. So they were a very believable couple. Yeah, because she's basically Jada. I mean, yeah, but, that's like look wise. <laughs> to be to be fair, she basically is Jada though. <laughs> yeah, she probably is gonna hate me for saying that, but she made him call me, and I turned into the whitest teenage girl sure. in the world. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I cannot believe I'm talking to Will Smith. And I was like, six years Woo! old. He was, like, uh. he was like, what you talking about? I was just like, uh, I'm like your biggest fan. Um, I've seen every episode of Fresh Prince. I was just I was spitting out facts and he was like, let me talk to your mama. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. And had my small heart attack at that moment. But That's like, hilarious. Every movie I watch of his that's not like... Men in Black. Or Wild Wild West. Yeah. Which we won't talk about. Well, I mean, that movie makes you cry just in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you cry for Although, humanity. Although, the sunglasses <laughs> that they gave away at Burger King... Yeah, those were the bomb. That was... I had both the like gold and brown silver pair, ones, yeah. and then I had the silver and like black pair. Yeah. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. But like... Pursuit of happiness. Of course, man. I cry every time I watch that. Or Seven Pounds, which people yeah. hate. But I I'm love like, that movie. I do too, and like I can't watch it. Something about Will Smith, like I'm, it just becomes real. Like yeah. when he said the infamous like line, "How come he don't love me, man?" Yeah, I cry. <laughs> to the other day, I was looking at it on Facebook, and I'm like, I was not even remotely emotional, and then I watched that, and I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. We actually just talked about this with my last guest where it was like that scene is so like memed like all the time and people are like no one ever thought that Will Smith was a good actor until this happened and it's like really though like everyone knew. Didn't he do like by that time like several movies though? No, by that time that was actually the first thing that he ever did. Like the reason why he got that show was because rapping, right? yeah because they saw the parents just didn't understand videos and things like that and they saw that he was funny but what about he did um there was a movie where he played like a gay character and everybody was yeah. like, blown away but i thought that was before that episode specifically no no that was after that was i think after season one or season two well yeah the but the dad episode happened like once he was like in, like in college I could almost swear to you that that episode happened I, very early on. Well, I don't know about I don't know about the first season. You know how I can tell that it's not why? <laughs> Just because like Will Smith in the first couple of seasons was significantly skinnier than he was in the last couple. He just bulked up like muscle wise. Yeah, you're his right. head was bigger. Yeah, like he was. He, well, you know he, about heads. So I yeah. do. He looked like high top fade Robin in the first. There couple. you go. And then in the Fair last enough. couple, he Fair enough. You're probably like, right. Yeah. So that's how, like, in my head, I'm like, because I can remember the outfit kind of. He had on like a dad cap and like a. Yes. Vest. Yeah. Ironically, he had a dad cap on. Exactly. And, <laughs> and then his dad just says, "Nope." Yeah, man, that show. You know what's funny is that for me. The the one that I saw, I where it like really made me cry like for real because everyone always uses the you know why don't he love me man or whatever which don't get me wrong it's great it's very good I think I know which episode you're gonna mention which one is it the one where Will gets shot and he says yes. give me the gun you owe me yeah it's I, when oh he's like you owe me yeah you owe me like and that was just like it for me like yeah I, that like that, that's the thing like he gets emotional so quick in shows that it makes you emotional because you just feel like oh yeah this is real yeah we just yeah. we just switched over this is real life it's so crazy because when you think of like other shows where they had these like serious episodes they were always sad and they did tug your heartstrings a little bit but there was always something missing there was always yeah. like a little umph you know oh, yeah. like they had gun control episodes on family matters and they had racism episodes well, on family matters they and had things. they had probably more gun control episodes on family matters yeah, than any than other anything show. else yeah wasn't that the episode where carl and uh steve both t- both turned into bruce lee wasn't that a or was that gangs <laughs> 
<laughs> that was with, that was gangs. But no, it was uh, it was just Steve. Uh, Steve's <laughs> Steve turned into no. Bruce I think Lee. I saw one where they both did. They both did went they into really? the thing and they came out with the wig. Man, that first of all, I don't put it past them because <laughs> that seems like it's probably true. But it's just like that might just also be my imagination and things I want to happen. Man, that show, man, it because it's it. What's so funny? It's on Hulu, and what's so funny is that it's a pretty traditional sitcom the whole time. And then when it gets to season eight, it goes balls to the wall crazy. Like, they changed Harriet. You know, like, (laughs) Harriet's a new actress. But only for, like... Didn't they? Did they do that for the continuation of the show, or was it just like it was a only? Quick one? Well, it was only that season. And that because, was the end. Yeah, and then they ended it after that season. Why wouldn't they just end it at seven? But that was the episode where, like, they had Urkel bot. They had a. I remember. They had Urkel an Urkel. Bot. They had an Urkel Chucky doll. You know, yeah. Steve. Steve goes to space. They actually made those. <laughs> not the like legit like scary thing, but like, yeah, they not made, the Chucky like, ones. The, yeah. It kind of looked like the... Like um, the Pee Wee Herman doll. Exactly. Yeah, where you pull the Skinny. string and it starts talking. Yeah. Yeah. But... It's terrifying. It's great. <laughs> For me, I feel like I remember moments of shows, like, more so than I remember actual episodes. Like, the last yeah. episode of Dinosaurs. Like, have you seen that? It's the <laughs> Dude, most it's depressing, so depressing thing I've ever seen in my life. Yes. Yeah, it's... Uh, the uh, It ends with the the Ice Age. Yeah. Which, they all die. Which, yeah, listeners, if you don't know what the Ice Age is, it's not the DreamWorks movie. It's what, what happened, and that's what killed all the dinosaurs. It's not fun for dinosaurs. <laughs> it wasn't fun for dinosaurs. It was fun for squirrels yeah. looking for acorns, but that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I remember stuff like that, but then it's like, there's whole arcs of shows. Like, I loved the X-Men anime, and, like, oh, yeah. anime series, but I could not tell you a single storyline from Me it. Me neither, except dude. Except the one where there's, like... Basically, homeless people that are mutants that live underground. Yeah. That's what I remember, but I don't remember what it, the episode was about. But it kind of just feels like, be nice to homeless people. Because <laughs> they might have superpowers. they might be mutants. That's really funny. Yeah, I feel like that, you know, and I, I give a lot of crap to the Disney afternoon shows. But it's kind of true because... I feel like, and I'm not saying that the shows are bad. I'm just saying that, like, when I would watch, like, if I go back and think about it, I always remember, like, oh, I love that the show. Could never think of a single thing that happened on that show. I like, only remember what the happened on Pepper Ann. <laughs> All I know is Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, like, or whatever the, the song the is. The melody of yeah, it. Yeah, the melody of the song, you know? And that's all I really remember. Like, I don't remember what happened on Clifford the Big Red Dog. I just knew he was a freaking big dog. You know? <laughs> I, as a kid, I didn't even realize that there was, like, a cartoon of it. I just remember the books. Yeah, the books, Because my grandma yeah. was, like, huge on books. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I can appreciate it, but at the time, I was not about that life. You never, like, you never read Clifford? I, I, kind of. I, I looked at the pictures. Clifford. I was a big Clifford fan and Curious George fan. See, the books I was reading, like, I learned how to read really early. Yeah. Like, I was probably, here. like, six-ish, five-ish. Okay. So, yeah. I was reading, like, Goosebumps. And, oh, really? Like, okay. Like, books, books. And but that's the th- reason why I didn't read a lot of that was probably because it would have scared me. Oh, yeah. It totally yeah. did. Like, the <laughs> the abominable snowman of Pasadena or whatever. It was yeah. Called. Or, like, uh, say cheese and die. Like, you find a camera that takes your picture, and then you're, and then it shows you how you die. Yeah. You know, it's the like, worst. Yeah. But, I mean, I read those because that's, like, I feel like the early 90s, that was the book to read. That and Animorphs. Yeah. I completely agree. I just yeah. liked Animorphs, Animorphs was because awesome. of the cover. Yeah. <laughs> the cover. You know what's funny is that that's the only thing from our childhood that i can think of that was like huge that no one's made a movie yet yeah there's no reboot of animorphs yeah or alex mack yeah or well terminator 2 technically you know technically (laughs) alex mack is a remake of terminator 2 yeah i guess yeah (laughs) but um yeah like yeah i'm thinking of like all now that i'm talking about i feel like there's so many shows that are like rushing back my memory like street sharks dude yeah i had absolutely. all of the action figures of that yeah. action figures were like that was my thing yeah like, that was for it for years i i would collect the cards on the back of the action figure box like, me too that had the other ones like 
I was merchandising at the age of like five because I needed <laughs> to like know what was part of the series. That's awesome. Even though I didn't get them. So now that we're talking about like action figures and stuff, what commercials and stuff were you into? Man, there are so many commercials that like I love the Slim Jim commercial with sure. Macho Man. Yeah, snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> Yeah, just like the outfit, because it was literally what he would wear in the ring. Yeah. Like with all the tassels and all that stuff. Like, I was a very visual kid, so anything I could look at and it caught me off guard, like the Capri Sun, where you turn into the T-1000, yeah. the whatever, yeah, the exactly. Terminator again. <laughs> exactly. Like that, and then gushers when your head like turns yeah. into fruit. Exactly. Those are great. What about like cereals and things like that? Were you into cereal at all? I loved cereal, but, like, the choice of cereals was not something I had a big part in. Because, really? like, when I would go to my dad's house, I'd be like, can we get Fruity Pebbles? Can we get, like, Lucky Charms? I wanted all the stereotypical kid cereals. And yeah. he's like, we can get Corn uh, corn Pops or Sugar Smacks. Because those are the only two cereals he liked, so that's what we ate. Yeah. So that's, like the era of big kid my dad was so like his cereal was like 70s cereal like like i said like sugar smacks i'm just tastes like burnt popcorn and sugar <laughs> burnt popcorn that's kind of accurate actually <laughs> like literally i think that's what it says on the box burnt popcorn and sugar yeah that and then um i mean their mascot's a frog it can't possibly taste that good yeah no nah. <laughs> and then corn pops Again, just tastes like popcorn. Yeah. Sweet popcorn. It's kettle corn. Yeah. Well, so. yeah, but that's actually true, though, because it, it is corn. Oh, well. You know? That explains a lot. So, Thank you for that. But, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, every episode, I like to review a box of cereal with my guest. And I usually like to get a cereal that has something to do with my guest in some way, shape, or form. Nice. So... I spoke to my sponsors over at Captain Crunch Cereal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right? Now, by sponsor, I mean that I like them and I buy all their products. And by spoke to, I mean that I tweeted them repeatedly and they didn't get back to me. But the one that I got for you specifically was Cotton Candy Crunch. You don't know how happy you just made me. I love Cotton Candy. <laughs> do you really? I do. That's, okay, that's an added bonus. Yeah. Because... The reason why I got this for you was because it reminded me of like when we met because we met at, at kind of like a music festival kind yeah. of a thing. And so I was like, oh, this reminds me of Lance, you know, in a lot of different ways. So it's like a festival. Yeah. And it makes me so happy that you like cotton candy. So this is going to be amazing. Like, have you ever had cotton candy grapes? No, that sounds great. It's the most GMO, like, heavy food in the world, but There's they're no delicious. Way it can be. <laughs> yeah, because cotton candy's not a thing. Exactly. It's, it's not a sugar. thing that grows on trees. <laughs> yeah, so it lit literally just tastes like grapes, but cotton candy, like, notes. <laughs> Dude, this smells potent. Holy cow. And and I mean in a good way. You know? I'm sure it smells like pure sugar, and I'm, <laughs> I'm all about it. Well... Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my Reptar cereal bowl, and I'll make sure to mic it so that way all the ASMR weirdos can loop it and make it their ringtone or whatever the weird thing it is that they do. I'm so. loving that bowl. Yeah, man. It's it's a cool Reptar cereal bowl. I can smell the cereal from here. Right? You're literally like six feet away from me, and I can smell it. Okay. Holy cow, man. There is no way this, this cereal doesn't have... 8,000 grams of sugar. Dentists are <laughs> mad at you just by pouring it. <laughs> the, if you're a dentist, you could probably smell it from your speakers right now. You can now. smell the money coming into your office. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, so it's it would so be... so strong. I feel like I'm at like a hookah bar. <laughs> like, you know, like all the yes. flavored sugar? Yes. Smells? That's exactly what this smells like. <laughs> yes. That is... 100% what it smells like. The most South Florida reference I could pull. Oh my gosh. It smells like a, a cotton candy hookah bar. That's what it smells like. Oh my gosh. Okay. So Lance, it would be fun to review this cereal. But what would be more fun is to review this cereal as the characters on the box. But since you, I don't really want to do like the captain. So with this, I thought it would be more fun if... You reviewed the cereal as if you were trying to sell it at a carnival. 
<laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. That gives me range. Yeah. So you can literally do any kind of voice you want, and I'll play carnival music for you. Okay. Um, give me just a second here. Hopefully I don't get an ad. All right. That is very carnival. Exactly. So, whenever you're ready, Lance. All right, let me get into my mindset. Step on up and try your hand at this really crazy looking cereal. <laughs> it's purple, so it's pink, it's very, very fake. <laughs> Let's try this. Oh man, this cereal is sweet. This is, whoa, really sweet. Yeah, I'm assuming. You can win a prize by just not getting diabetes. <laughs> Um, whoa, my brain is like pausing just because I can feel the sugar coursing through yeah. my veins right now. <laughs> That's great. Poof. You can, like, seriously, you win a prize if you can finish this <laughs> and not go into a coma. Holy cow. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, That's cotton really candy. That's all I have to say about this. Cotton candy crunch, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to eat the whole bowl, my Oh, food. yeah, absolutely. This is for you, so you can oh, keep it. perfect. This episode of Child Like It Best with Mike Valdez is brought to you by Ugly Drinks. Ugly is a company that makes sparkling water with real fruit flavor. No sugar, no sweetener, nothing artificial. And with every purchase, a percentage goes to the Girl Up campaign. Ugly Drinks comes in delicious flavors like peach, lemon lime, cherry, and my personal favorite, watermelon. And guess what, Child Like It Best listeners? You can receive 10% off your first order by using the code UGLYMIKE at checkout. It's true. Usually calling me ugly would be offensive in real life, but at UglyDrinks.com, it'll save you money. Visit UglyDrinks.com and use the code UGLYMIKE to get 10% off your order. It's time to get real. It's time to get ugly. This reminded me, have you ever been to, um, have you ever been to Halloween Horror Nights? Because I'm a huge scaredy cat, I have not. Really? I... I've I've also not done the like normal Florida stuff. Sure. Like I've never been to Magic Kingdom. What? <laughs> yeah, I've been to World of Sport, but oh, I've not okay. been to Magic Kingdom. <laughs> okay. I, um, I've also never been to Bush Gardens. Holy cow, that's insane! Um, just because like I don't like roller coasters. Oh, okay. So that kind of like there's no reason we go to Bush Gardens, but um, I have not been to Halloween Horror Nights just because last time I went to a a haunted house i kicked a guy oh yeah. yeah i was the rock for halloween when i was 11 okay and i went with my cousin because she lo- lives to torment me yeah like as a kid <laughs> she would she had halloween decorations in her room just for when i would come to visit so she could like terrify me oh my god so um she took me to a haunted house and the first person that popped out was Jason. Mm-hmm. And as reflex, I kicked him right. square in the nether region. Yeah. And he broke character real quick. <laughs> That's great. Because I goal posted him. And he was like, oh. <laughs> and grabbed me by the shirt and just threw me to the next room. Like, get out of here. And I was terrified. So after that, I don't think I ever did like a haunted house type thing ever again dude did you ever go to church haunted houses oh yes yeah where it's like the end times (laughs) yeah for sure where the whole thing is 90 percent of it is watching people that are sinners die yeah (laughs) and then and then you walk through hell they they definitely (laughs) did a couple of those like and the funny part is because i wasn't going to church like super super regularly until i was like older yeah like 1920 so i didn't see this until i was an adult to say what yeah. the heck are they doing because mm-hmm. i'm like you're gonna scare kids but like not the right kind of scare kids oh yeah but i definitely do remember my fair share man i remember at one point when i was in high school i must have been in like ninth or tenth grade i was in a play that was called eternity and the whole thing it was during the halloween season and the whole thing was different kind of stories, like li- different vignettes of different people that died. Some of them were saved, some of them weren't. But I was in like the big story at the very end, <laughs> and this—you know—I'm thinking about it now, and it's just making me laugh because it's just awful. Like this is just 
awful that anyone would ever do this, but I was a part of it. Like, I didn't think anything was wrong with it then. You know, now it's just like, gosh, I see how unhealthy it is. Scaring people into salvation. Exactly. But the whole thing was that it follows a family and they're just like, you know, the, the parents are like these Christian people that are trying to take their kids to church and they go to church because they're, they have to and blah, blah, blah. And there's a little flashback sequence of us at like the, the kids, like at a worship service at youth group. And then it, it, you hear the past, you know, the pastor like, oh, if you feel like you need to get saved or whatever. And then my character goes, uh, eh, maybe I'll just do it some other time, just some other time. I feel like I know where this is going already. And so, uh, yeah, essentially what happens is the family dies together. Yeah, that's exactly where I thought this was going. And the gates open, and sure enough, the devil and demons come out, (laughs) take the kids from their parents to hell, and then the parents merrily go into heaven with Jesus. Sounds about right. It's just like, what? That is so unhealthy to show people. Like, These kids are going to be terrified, exactly number one. Saying. But number two, they're going to be like getting saved every week. Dude, I want, I'm not even kidding you. I've told many of my Christian friends this. When I was in, high, or when I was in like youth group, I got saved 5,000 times. Yeah, <laughs> like, sounds I, about right. I got saved every week because I was so scared. That's like middle school camp. I, I when I was yeah. a middle school leader, we took our kids to camp, and there was a couple kids that literally four times during this week walked <laughs> up, and I'm like, "Bro, you did this yesterday. <laughs> like, you, this isn't something that you gotta like. It doesn't wash off. You, you're good. <laughs> like, it's, I know you went swimming today, but it's still there. Yeah, like, it's still good. there. It's not washed off. Well, if you were like the other kids who saw your play, I'm sure they were <laughs> terrified. Well, I, and I didn't see it. I was in it. <laughs> well, yeah. So you had to practice. So this, I, I sure literally that. jumped into hell yeah, exactly. <laughs> every night so, I'm for sure. a month. Have you ever, uh, this reminds me, have you ever seen Jesus Christ Superstar? No. I've never oh seen it. Oh my gosh. This I want play to. is the most not like biblical thing. Sure. But it's also very very good in my yeah, opinion yeah. like i saw i was obsessed with it for a while yeah. so like i would sing the songs sure and like all this stuff uh and then my mom for my 18th birthday got me tickets to see it at the broward center okay and it was the original guy who played jesus playing yeah. jesus the thing about it was jesus christ superstar came out in like the 60s or 70s oh no and i turned 18 in 2007 yeah. So he was like sixty. Yeah. And just for those who aren't Christians he listening, like, he's Jesus was thirty three when he died. Yeah. So this was not super accurate, but it was the best thing ever because the well, guy's like, like I he, said, sixty year old Jesus, but he was singing all of the same songs. Well, there's a difference. Like if you're, you know, like for example, like Paul Rudd's fifty, but no, he looks this guy 30. was like every bit of sixty. Like he, <laughs> like he definitely, like he had 60. the wrinkles of like somebody who. Well, no, he had to be like probably closer to seventy. Sure, and he looked like it, but he had long hair still. Like holy cow, uh, like an aged rock star. Oh and my god, and he was gosh. like hitting the like seventies and eighties rock high notes. <laughs> that's right. that's like, crazy. That's it was the best thing ever, and I saw it with my mom and my my cousin, and I was like on the edge of my seat. Bought, I was sold in, so, sold out. Like, there was a, I was on board. Man, there was a a movie that I saw a long time ago. I don't know if you saw it. It was under the radar for a really long time, but it was called The Hamlet Two. Oh yeah, I did see Hamlet too. Yeah, and they had that song where they were doing like their their Jesus Christ Superstar kind of thing, where it was Rock Me Sexy Jesus. Oh yeah, wasn't it done by the guys who did like South Park or something? No, I w- it would have been better. Like I, my brain <laughs> remembers like blonde haired people with the same kind of swoop as uh, no. like Trey Parker. Dude, Trey, any you know what's funny is that I know that what a lot of what they do is like wrong. <laughs> But, like, I think that what they do is so funny. Like, basketball? Yeah. Like, I love I love South Park, dude. And I love basketball. And, man, I can't even begin to tell you how much I love Book of Mormon. See, I have not uh, seen it. Dude. That's, like, I, I, it's a treat. I've heard. There's so many, like, plays and stuff that I've heard a lot about. But, yeah. But, like, 
my era of going to musicals was very early and very short. I saw like my two favorite as a kid were Fame okay. and Cats, even though Cats is like, <laughs> I still don't know what it's about. Yeah, I saw no, it, notice. but I'm like, my mom saw it with me. She doesn't know what it's about either. <laughs> there's like space cats that like well, live in garbage cans. Have, <laughs> there's, there's a really great clip online of, of Idris Elba on uh, James Corden. And I guess they're trying to promote the new Cats movie that they're in together. And he asked Idris Elba, so what's Cats about? And does he not know? And he literally goes, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, people in the movie don't know what the movie's about. This is, this is not believable. a good sign. <laughs> Especially, have you seen the trailer for them, the new Cats movie? Dude, it looks awful. It's terrifying. It looks, there is literally a scene where Jennifer Hudson looks like she's desperately begging to be out, like, out of that suit. It looks like like a filter, like an Instagram filter or something yes. of a cat. Yeah. But it's also terrifying because I feel like the bodies don't move quite with the head. So it just <laughs> looks like the, the most terrifying thing to me that I've ever seen is like scary movies with kids. Yeah. So like the way they move in like the ring and stuff like that. To this day, I can't watch movies like that. That's what it reminds me of because the way it's kind of jerky, the movements, and ugh. And like, uh, well, and also James Corden looks like the penguin from Batman Returns. Have you yeah, seen? Yeah, he ha- does. Yeah, the like top he, hat and the, like, he straight up looks like the penguin. Like, it's been my mission whenever I see a tweet from somebody from that movie. <laughs> like, for example, Taylor Swift, when the trailer came out, she's like, I'm a cat now, and that's all I could ever ask for. And I retweeted it with the comment, that's great, I'm really happy for you, but why is James Corden playing the penguin from <laughs> Batman Returns? <laughs> I think he's in the wrong movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, like, my thing. Like, I want to ask all the actors, like, hey, why is James Corden playing the penguin from Batman Returns? He straight up looks like that. You just pulled a Taylor Swift, I'm going to let you finish, but yeah. <laughs> why is James Corden playing the penguin? <laughs> You Kanye Taylor Swift I after did. Kanye Kanye. Yeah, I did. You double Kanye like, her. <laughs> well, it's funny because during that time, like at least that point in her career, I was more sympathetic towards her side of the story. Where it was like, oh man, like that sucks, and and I actually still side with it. Where it's like it de- it t- shouldn't have happened, you know. The funniest thing, yeah. Regret- I saw like a post of mine, like you know how Facebook does the. This many years ago, you made a post about this. Yeah. Literally yesterday, I saw a post of me responding to that moment. It yeah. must have been like ten year, like close to 10 years ago now. And I yeah, was like, yeah. uh, I mean, I agree with the sentiment, but Beyonce probably did have the best album of that <laughs> year. She had single ladies. Yeah. What was Taylor Swift's hit at that point? Well, first no of all. No one knows. Well, the thing is, like, it was, it was the VMAs, so it's fan voted, meaning that you know, and not only that, like it's MTV, so you can vote like millions and millions of times. It's like the I Kids' Choice you. Awards, dude. Like, you uh, know, The Rock is gonna win Best Actor every time, as he <laughs> should. Yeah, as he should for <laughs> movies like that. Absolutely, for all movies. <laughs> the Rock for Schindler's List. Yeah, absolutely. Schindler's List too. <laughs> the Rock in Jaws as exactly. the shark. <laughs> like The Rock in The Rock. Yeah, as The Rock. Yeah, The Rock in in Titanic as the iceberg. Exactly. Like all that stuff. But yeah, man. So I was more sympathetic to her because it was like, man, this shouldn't have happened. Because like, yeah, even if you don't agree with it, like it's just rude to do that, you know. However, if that had never happened, but it happened like la- like this year, I would have thought it was hysterical. Yeah, and, and we and would have all seen it. it coming so much more because Kanye has kind of lost. Like, I love Kanye because mm-hmm. he's so ridiculous, yeah. but like he's lost his mind. Well, the thing is, like, bit. I'm a little bit on the conspiracy theory train about that it's not really Kanye about a lot of these things, especially with with him. Um, <clears throat> Because what nobody seems to think or remember is uh, immediately, not immediately, but maybe like about a month or so afterwards, after those VMAs, guess who came out with an album? You know, freaking Taylor Swift. Okay, I'm like, 
Kanye? No, Taylor Swift came out with an album. Makes sense. And then maybe a week or two later, it was weeks. It wasn't like months. It was weeks later, Kanye came out with his. So really? I was like, yeah. And, and the first single off of Kanye's album <clears throat> was Runaway. Which is, let's have a toast for the douchebags, let's have a toast. You know, so it's like, a lot of people saw that as like, oh, that's like his apology to Taylor Swift. But it's like, no, he probably wrote that two or three years ago. Was that my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy? Yes, which is my favorite Kanye album. That album album is so stinking good. It's so good, right? It's so good. That's like, honestly, not production-wise, but writing-wise, that's the, the, he's, that's my favorite and probably the best he's been. Yeah, I mean... I love Crazy Kanye. Like yeah. as far as his music, like his music, crap not, on not black... him as a person. No. <laughs> he's just insane now. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the clothes? He's building a cult. I'm convinced. It's so weird, dude. <laughs> like I, I like the like I want to like the idea of the Sunday service thing he's doing, but I'm sure. very convinced he's going to be David Koresh in like I, a year. I honestly, you know, it's funny. If he starts I wearing never, these shoes that I'm wearing now, yeah. he's starting a cult. I didn't consider it, but once you said that, it actually does make more sense. Everybody's wearing these big baggy, like beige clothes. <laughs> they, and look, like, they look like those potato bags. Yeah. Like <laughs> his sweatshirts, they look real comfortable, but they look like, yeah. Bro, his I'm clothes are sure so expensive, dude. going to start a cult. It's like stupid. Like I... You know, the only thing that I understand paying money, like, that much money for are Yeezys. But even then, like, if you look online, you mm-hmm. can find, like, the Chinese, we use the same material fakes of Yeezys yeah. for a fraction of the price. I'm convinced, and I'll say it, like, to where everybody can hear me. Sure. If you ever see me in a pair of Yeezys, they are not real. <laughs> Because I will, if I buy Yeezys, they're gonna be from this website. Yeah. I, I look at it on my phone like twice a day. Like I can get away with this. Do you? Which what website do you use? It's do you called, use Goat? N- n- See, that's the thing. When it comes to sneakers, especially now as a married man, yeah, my wife would kill me if I bought like Jordans again. Sure. Because I remember, like, it's just too ridiculously priced. So. Well, the the thing is, like, first of all, if for for all the shoe nerds out there. Uh, Lance is wearing the Cortez sneakers that Marty McFly wears in Back to the Future. And Force which Gump. Is, yeah, which they're a- that's actually my favorite um, silhouette. Like, I, lo- that's my I favorite love these. Shoe. I-, I actually bought these for me and for my wife, and mm-hmm. I tried to convince her that, like, no, babe, you love you yeah. love Forrest Gump. Yeah. You want these shoes. <laughs> and she's like, babe, I don't, I don't know if I like them. Until we wore them to New York, and T.J. Miller walked by and was like, you guys are twinning. And I was like... <laughs> Was that T.J. Miller? Yeah. And I turned around, and she didn't even know who he was, but I, I freaked out for a minute. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, so I I actually have I have those, and then I have the blue ones, oh, yeah. the blue silhouette, because the I saw Donald, yeah, I saw, uh, Donald Glover wear them. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 with the turtleneck and mm-hmm. shorts. Yeah, yeah. That, was his, uh, that was his because of the internet phase. That w- was his. With those shoes and, yeah. and the black turtleneck and, and khaki shorts. He was getting ready for fall. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, like now I can't like like I said, if I'm wearing a shoe that looks like it's really exclusive or expensive, yeah. it's definitely fake. Dude. The only pair of real like shoes that I already own, yeah, that I love to death. I have a pair of uh, they call them the Royal Air Jordan ones. Yeah, that is probably my favorite shoe that I own. Yeah, but, like I've worn it to death. I got those like six, six or seven years ago, and I wear them. Not so much anymore, but I used to wear them, like, all the stink attack. It's crazy because my favorite shoe that I have, I don't, I I rarely ever wear. Yeah. Because it's my favorite, and I'm you scared that it's going to get yeah. dirty and all that stuff. And it's the Air Max from Back to the Future 2. Ooh. So I got them from Goat. It's the most money I've ever spent on shoes. Oh, yeah. And to many people, it would be the dumbest decision ever because I've only worn them three times. For me, like, (laughs) that's the thing. Like, I'll get shoes that I love, and I'll kill them. Like, I love the fact that my sneakers are dirty because I But Cortez's are affordable. That's the thing. Yeah, that's true. Like, they're expensive because they're Nikes, but they're in the the vignette of Nikes. They're the cheapest cheapest Nikes. Nikes. (laughs) Yeah. But I love, like, shoes that are, like, 
when when I fall in love with a shoe, more often than not, it's a super trend based shoe. Like sure. Back like one of my favorite pair of shoes I've ever owned was a pair of uh, Nike Dunks. Yeah. Dunk SBs. They were the money cat lows so yeah. they were gold yeah and i wore these shoes every day like they weren't gold sneakers and wore them with things that you don't wear gold sneakers with but they were man i wore those shoes into the ground my heel was starting to like pop out of the back of the shoe that's I wore them awesome so like when it comes to sneakers like I have, like, shoes that I love, but yeah. I'm not going to pay for. Yeah. Like, I love the new Fear of God shoes that mm-hmm. Jerry Lorenzo came out with. Yeah, yeah. But, nah, I'm good. Yeah, well. I'll save that for the past. The only reason, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> like, every, like, hip pastor now wears those shoes. Well, there's that Instagram account that makes me really angry called Pastors oh, with yeah. Sneakers. That or makes me, like, livid because it's like, you know, they didn't pay for those shoes. It makes you so freaking upset, dude. Like, like, cause, I think it yeah. makes me upset for different reasons because I feel like. Well, it makes me upset because I immediately was like, oh, you used all the tithes and offerings that everyone gave you to buy those shoes that cost $400. See, that's initially, like, how I looked, I thought about it, but then I'm like, a lot of these people are friends with like Jerry Lorenzo or like whatever like famous like person who made the shoe. Yeah, and they were gifting them left and right. Like even like so, I love that's uh, also Christian another rap thing. now. Yeah, and well, Lecrae. it's really good. Yeah, Lecrae, <laughs> yeah, now it's good because yeah. of Lecrae. <laughs> he wears like I went to uh, their concert in Fort Lauderdale. Where it was like all of one one six. Oh yeah, yeah. Because him was and little, Andy Minio yeah, and all those people. Because it was literally a mile and a half away from my house. Yeah. And so we Ubered over there and saw the show, and my mind literally exploded. And yeah. I literally went to work the next day, no voice, because <laughs> I was screaming like, "You can't stop me!" Yeah, at the top yeah. of my lungs. And, really good like, stuff. Like everybody in the concert, like all the performers. Had on Fear Gods. Yeah. And I'm like, they probably could buy them, but I doubt that they did. Yeah. Because, like, they're influencers. They're probably, like, Levi Lusco is probably not paying for Yeezys if he's given them. Or, like, (laughs) Carl Lentz or whatever. Yeah. Carl Lentz is, what, Bieber's best friend, so. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's the pastor from Calvary, right? Uh, No, Carl Lentz is Hillsong. Oh, New from York. Hillsong, yeah. yeah. Because there's uh, the Calvary in L.A. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That he's he's really close friends with Justin Bieber and like a whole bunch of musicians. Do you watch that show on uh, on YouTube called Sneaker Shopping with Complex? Heck yeah, yeah. And there's one with Chris D'Elia that's really great. Oh yeah, where he goes, I just don't want to buy a four hundred dollar shoe based on principle. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like, like, exactly. Wh- why That's why you? I'm very sold on just getting the Chinese pair. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm, like, especially because it's like Kanye is so stinking rich. Yeah. My little hard earned retail four hundred dollars <laughs> is not going to like he's going to be like, right, whatever. It's not even going to scratch the surface. Yeah. Absolutely. But I got to stress out about paying rent in two weeks because it's bought a ridiculously priced pair of shoes yeah or you know a 200 hundred dollar crew neck that looks exactly. like a freaking potato bag you know like <laughs> all these things like with a collar that's like literally half of a turtleneck There's, <laughs> it's so weird like yeah i you know when you see certain things on celebrities especially it goes back to what you were talking about there's like there's no way they're actually paying for it yeah like for example i saw donald glover went to d23 like last year to promote solo oh yeah because he was young lando right? yeah and he went with a uh, a gucci cardigan with donald duck all over it and i was like oh that's cool because he's, he's donald <laughs> so that's cute and like he's at disney or whatever and I have this weird thing about me when I look at Donald Glover, especially with certain clothing. I'm like, I have to get that. <laughs> so. I can I can appreciate that because the pants, dude. He's so fashionable to me. He really is. He really That's is. That's why so I'm wearing short shorts and Cortezes right now. Yeah, he's a very fashionable dude. And so I saw that cardigan, and I was, and so I Googled it, and I found out that Gucci made it. Turns out that that sweater cost seven hundred and thirty something dollars 
like was what? it on discount at Gucci? Because that makes sense <laughs> completely. Like, like it's like well, who would ever pay that much money for a cardigan sweater? Like, but yeah, Donald is one of those guys where like anytime I see not not as much lately because well for one he's not really visible as much anymore or wearing shirts or wearing like you shirts. have very little That's to go off of immediately what i it's was a pair say of pants was like well i mean he's got nice pants but yeah. i don't really know and what those kind of pants shirt. have you looked them up they're like number one they're like they're very interesting looking because they're well, really was, high-waisted well he was given those for free yeah and they're really expensive yeah but he was 100% given those for free because it reminds me actually of this conversation that he had a long time ago where uh, somebody asked him, you know, like, oh, why do you wear this specific kind of like aesthetic? Like, why do you wear only pants or why do you wear, you know, short shorts and, you know, whatever? Because it's it's like an iconic look, but it also d- isn't branded. Yeah. So that's why it's interesting to people. For sure. And he was like, well, the reason why I do that is because I'm never going to wear something unless people are paying me to wear it. Exactly. And he was like, that's something I told Chance. And then you start realizing, oh, Chance made the number three his thing. You know? Overall. And overalls and like all that stuff. Like, And you never see him in something that's like clearly branded. Same, uh, it's same usually his brand like it's the number three you know and so like things like that and so that's why a lot of their stuff is very basic but it's weird man i looked up there's there's these weird like tumblr people that, tumblr yeah like yeah. well like now it's reddit technically okay because i'm like you and all of the 13 year old girls are yeah. so happy right now <laughs> no it's 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 probably reddit now but but essentially like Whenever I'm looking, whenever I see something that Donald wore, there's like a specific subreddit about like where you can buy those pants or whatever. Or those, oh, that's or Pinterest the... for me all day. Yeah, yeah. Like, I have enti- <laughs> like my style Pinterest is extensive, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> so yeah, and and like, you know, like for example, he started wearing those white t-shirts with the long tail oh yeah like before it got like huge like what i'm wearing right now it's yeah like not white yeah and yeah. uh like he started wearing all that and then i was like that's really cool like i've never seen that before like whatever so it it comes from this european site uh that he talks a lot about in his rap called band of outsiders makes sense yeah i think i remember that yeah like he he says like boo all over me or like you know yeah. band of outsiders kids soon apc macy's got on me you know like things <laughs> like that like he talks a lot about clothing brands and then i started realizing oh it's because he wants free clothes yeah. <laughs> that's the best way to use your celebrity like in the event that i ever become famous dude i will say this like, though he promotes the most expensive brands. Oh, yeah. That would not be me. I'd be like, hey, Target, send me shorts. <laughs> you come out with an album that's just like Target. <laughs> These shorts that I'm wearing now are my favorite shorts. I got them at Target for my yeah. honeymoon. Yeah. And I wear them every time I'm not working. <laughs> you just like shouts out to original use by Target. Exactly. <laughs> it would be. Is that Tar- the name of their brand? They have a hipster brand called Original Use, they I do. believe. They do. I, I can't remember if that's what these are specifically, but like my whole thing would be Target and Urban Outfitters. Yeah. That that would be the two <laughs> brands that I shout out more than anything. And J. Crew. That's amazing. I'd be the most Well J. Crew is like that's but, like starting to get expensive. J. Crew Factory, to be specific. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's dial it back a little. Yeah, because J. J. Crew is not European prices. Oh, like no. it's no, it's not Band of Outsiders At or Kitsune all. or anything. Yeah. But it is like, wow, that's like a hundred bucks for a polo. That's a lot of See, money. I used to yeah. work there, so that's the only reason. Like, I <laughs> okay. wore the clothes. Like it was kind of because I had to. Exactly, and like I said, it was the factory. The prices yeah. at J Crew Factory are very different from regular J Crew. But was it regular J Crew, or was it like all the shirts would have like a third armhole or something? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Not to that extent, but the prints are just kind of off. Sure, I like, would assume. <laughs> you, you'll say like, oh, this looks like the shirt David Beckham wore. Right. It's not. 
But it looks like <laughs> it's not. But it looks like like the the fabric is completely different. It's just a similar print. I that was my main selling point for one of their shirts. Was it really? Because yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, this looks like the shirt that David Beckham wore. I mean, uh, I'll be day. honest. That's usually my selling point for most of my clothes. It's always like, oh, that looks like something Donald Glover wore. Or, oh, that looks like something Andrew McMahon wears, or you know that yeah. kind of thing. I have my like two or three guys. That I'm like, if I see them wear, it, then I'll probably kind of try it bro that's that is that's so real that's exactly what i do (laughs) like they're your visual like mannequin where you're like oh i can imagine myself doing that as well which is dumb that i think that i'm as cool as donald glover but (laughs) hey man like i know i'm not but i'm still gonna try (laughs) i'm gonna try at least you know (laughs) yeah but yeah yeah for me it's donald glover and like uh andrew mcmahon and like Chris D'Elia a little bit now because okay. he's been wearing a lot more like fashionable stuff on stage. I feel like a lot of those like comedians that are like of the same ilk is like D'Elia and like Rogan yeah. and uh, the King and the Sting. I can't, uh, can't remember. Brendan the- Schaub and oh, Theo, uh, Vaughn. Theo Vaughn. The way yeah. that a lot of them dress, they're like, especially Brendan Schaub because he yeah. just dressed as like a giant hipster. He really does, yeah. But, well, and actually, Brendan Schaub is like the greatest like living mannequin I can have because like he's a bigger dude. Like he's a big like, strong boy. Yeah, he's a big strong boy, and so like, and and I'm like, oh well, you know, he has a big back, and like, so do I. So it's just like, oh, okay, cool. Like that thing looks weird on him or good on him or whatever. So yeah, I mean, I feel like that. Like, I consider myself to be part of the the chubby tribe sure so like bigger guys are like the only ones i have to go off of as yeah. far as like what looks good on people like lecrae because he's so tall and yeah. broad i'm like okay if he does act pro- or andy minio because he's short and chubby i'm like yeah i i can, I can combine the two of their outfits and kind of make something because i got the chubby and the tall yeah so like you know that that reminds me did you um were you uh, were you ever in that Donald for Spider Man camp? Oh at all? heck yeah, yeah. But me I mean, too. yes and no. Sure. Because like, of course he would have been way too old. Because he would have been in the like, well, not when they wanted him to do it. He'd be <laughs> too old now. <laughs> I mean, even then, though, he was like twenty four. He was the same age as Andrew Garfield. Really? Yeah. I feel like he would have been like Mario Lopez as Slater. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was like when when they wanted him to do it he looked possibly it was i want to say it was like right around season one or something of, of community? community really yeah maybe okay so that makes sense so he was super young like he was yeah. andrew garfield's age which is still older than high school yes yeah, you true. know but yeah. then if you think about it people have been playing high schoolers like way beyond when they should have been. Oh yeah, John Travolta I mean, and, and freaking whatever her uh, name is. Stacy Dash is, Stacey was like Dash, seventy three yeah. years old playing yeah. in Clueless. Exactly. So yeah, it's funny because I was, you know, when when the Andrew Garfield ones came out, I wasn't like mad at the movie. Like I wasn't like, man, this freaking sucks. But the whole time I was just like, man, like it just would have been a lot cooler. If, yeah. if Donald Glover was in this, it would have been you know? a very different movie too. Yeah, but but I think different in a good way. Yeah, I mean, and if you really think about it, Spider Man's backstory is such a black story. That's that's a story. It's a thing that Donald Glover says in his stand up, but it's yeah. true. Like if if Spider Man were a book with no pictures in it, <laughs> and it was about a kid that lived with his auntie in Brooklyn, in Br- in Queens, or New Queens. York, okay, and his yeah. uncle Even was shot so. by a gang member, you would think it was a black kid. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you wouldn't even. That sounds like the Wu Tang show on Hulu right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but then you think about it, and it's like, like for example, like uh, like when you watch shows like Friends and things like that, where like they're in they're in New York or yeah. whatever, like, and you're like. How do you even know seven white people in New York? Yeah. Like, and, like, not even your barista it is black? Yeah, like, it is <laughs> so diverse in New yeah. York. How do you know the only white people, like, That ever? are all friends with each other? <laughs> so, when you think about it like that, it's, like, a really racist show. But yeah, <laughs> like, that's part of the re- Like, not to say that I didn't watch Friends just because there were no black people, but... Sure. But kind of. Well, like, it's that's hard not- for me to watch just because I'm, like... Number one, it like it's just so not 
uh, in that era, yeah, it was just not even a priority for like sure. Fresh Prince was still on the air at that time. I'm like, I'm I'm watching this. Yeah, well, I I was dude, I was like, never Martin is probably one of the best shows. I love Martin. Ever. I was never a friends guy Me and neither. And I was talking to and also like, you know, to be fair, I, I feel like friends is very it's very like like the marketing is towards women. Like women yeah. love friends cuz there's three different types of of each character for yeah. people. I feel like they try and make it marketable as broadly as they can. Sure. I don't know, man. There's just something about it. Like I saw one episode and it made me upset because there's this, there's a character where she has the whole thing is that uh, Chandler, uh, Matthew Perry's character is dating this girl and she has a really annoying laugh. Right. I, I must. Think I, I vaguely know. Is is it the girl who has like the dark hair? I have just kind of super Staten Island. I have no idea, man. That's I've, like the only thing I vaguely remember. Like I know the very broad strokes about that show because it's talked about so often. Yeah. So like I understand that you know that he marries Monica and like I understand that like Ross and Rachel are on again off again like and that Ross kind and of Monica thing. Monica are brother and sister, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Like. I know a lot of the broad strokes about that show, but I've never actually sat down and, like, watched a full season. There are way more, like, shows that are, like, inherently less popular that I've watched a lot more. Well, and and not only that, like, that show is just, like, it's not a novel premise. Yeah. Just... Like, it's, it's basically Seinfeld. It's also basically How I Met Your Mother. It's also basically, yeah. you know, what... Big it, Bang. It's Big Bang. Like, it's... It, the only thing that changes are, like, the little details. Quirks. Yeah, yeah, the little quirks where it's like, oh, instead of a coffee shop, now it's a bar. Instead of a bar, now they're nerds. Instead, instead, instead of nerds... Instead of a bar, now it's Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> <laughs> But doesn't look like Cheesecake Factory at all. <laughs> yeah, they they call it like uh, the Cheesecake House. No, it's literally <laughs> Cheesecake Factory with Big Bang. Oh, is it? Yeah, but they ju- it just looks nothing like a Cheesecake Factory. Oh, yeah, you're right. Big Bang does have a set piece that's at the Cheesecake Factory. That's where Penny works and for it, most of the show. And it straight up doesn't look like a Cheesecake I Factory. I know this because my you're mother-in-law, right. is a, she watches this show almost religiously. Yeah. And also is Sheldon. That show makes me so upset. Yeah, <laughs> in a lot. There's of ways. so many reasons why, like, <laughs> it could make some make one upset. The like, only reason why it makes me upset is just because, like, there's like two things about that show that it's it's kind of the reason why the mainstream likes it, and it like makes me feel weird inside. Like, for example, I feel like people are just like laughing at the fact that they're nerds. Like, so for example. A lot of people love it. Usually there's a big laugh whenever Sheldon will like spout out some sort of algebraic <laughs> thing, yeah. right? And it's this huge laugh, but like the only reason why people are laughing is because they don't know what the hell he's talking about. And because there's canned laughter. <laughs> like It's like yawning. <laughs> if you hear something laugh on TV, you're laughing, but you, you may not even understand what the heck is going on. Man, right it reminds me of that <laughs> this Family Guy episode where they're like... Two and a Half Men was filmed in front of a live studio ostrich. And then <laughs> and they do this joke, and then it just pans to one ostrich in the bleachers, like, uh. Like, <laughs> that's Big Bang Theory to me. And so, like, like for example, a guy put this in a vine, and I, like, wanted to hug this guy because it's, like, he, what I thought. I just couldn't put it into words. And he showed a scene from the Big Bang Theory and it's a scene where they're they're playing foosball, and then uh, one of the characters goes, "We'll we'll be the Autobots, and you guys will be the Decepticons." And it got this huge laugh, right? And the guy just starts screaming. He goes, "That's not a joke. Those are just things." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quite literally. Like, why are you, are you laughing because he's talking about Transformers? Like, that's not that's a joke. That's literally saying, I'll be blue, you be red. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> like, oh, colors, that's hilarious. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel like a lot of, like, honestly, people talk about how much they love a lot of the NBC sitcoms, and I'm... It's, like, going over my head to, like... I know people are gonna, like, 
look at me and scoff. Yeah. I don't get The Office. Sure. I, I just really don't. Mm-hmm. And, like, when people, like, reference it, like, Beats, Bears, Battlestar, Galactica, or right. whatever, I'm like, what you talking about, bro? Yeah. Like, it just, <laughs> like a lot of it, or, like, or even listening to uh, the, there's so, so many podcasts that I listen to when they reference it a lot. Yeah. Like, Nerdist, or, like, yeah. some of the other podcasts, and they reference The Office, and I'm like, huh? Like, here's it, here's the thing that is different from me and most people. You can say something like that, and even though I'm a really big fan of The Office, I understand. I feel like you're crying wh- on the inside. No, no, no. I understand why you don't like it. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like a lot of people think that The Office is their personality. Yeah. And they get butt hurt when somebody says that. Like but it, I yeah. realize that I'm a person. Yeah. And outside and of we're, that, and we're still friends regardless. Exactly. <laughs> So it, like what? <laughs> yeah, I've had so many people when I tell them that that like there are certain things that I don't like. Like when I lived in St. Thomas, I'm like, oh yeah, I don't like fish. They look at me like, like I just slapped their mother across yeah. the face, <laughs> just paint brushed her. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I just don't like. Fish. I just don't like it. Yeah, I get it. You know, like it's the same thing with like you know. There's a lot of people that that scoff when I say that I don't like friends. Cause yeah. I just, I don't, you know, and that's okay. Yeah. Like it's, we're still, we can still be friends. Although somebody told me they didn't like Fresh Prince. We got to shoot the fade. <laughs> like, that's funny. Like I can, I can appreciate that, but we, we can be friends after, but yeah. we got to throw some hands. Tell me about your podcast. So, uh, it's called the strong style podcast. Mm-hmm. Like you mentioned earlier, which yeah. is a reference to like the Japanese style of wrestling. Nice. It's called strong style wrestling. And, uh, it's basically like. They kind of combined MMA and uh, pro wrestling, so a oh, lot cool. of the kicks are like real, h- real like crazy kicks. Like yeah, there's yeah. this one guy named uh, Shibata, mm-hmm. and he is a fairly young guy, probably in his mid 30s, but has already had to retire because he's had so many concussions and oh my like gosh. neck stuff. Because they're like, they make it look so much more real because they're like take it like he literally one of his favorite things to do is headbutt people whoa and i'm like i've done that in like a fight when i was 11 and i knocked a kid cold out so i don't know how like that was like my moment of glory in detroit it's crazy how like adrenaline can oh yeah 100 percent can like make something like that not hurt Oh, yeah. Because, like, just thinking about hitting somebody in the skull with my skull yeah, no. hurts my head. Yeah. Fortunately for me, I have size as an advantage with the head. <laughs> yeah, you have a big head. It's like a moose <laughs> just crashing into you. So, But, like, yeah, this guy's done that so many times to where, like, he can't wrestle now. So, like, that's part of, like, that emblematic like style for japan yeah. and somehow it wasn't a podcast name yeah so i was like okay because i was literally sitting there trying to think of like random wrestling moves that i know the name of like the moss covered three handled credenza oh my gosh I'm like i could totally name a podcast this but then yeah, like no one would find it at all <laughs> And it's so random and niche. Yeah. Like, I literally went down Chris Jericho's list of moves that he, because he was, he considered himself to be the man of a thousand and four holds. Yeah. So I just went down the list of those holds and I'm like, no, I can't call it the Arm Bar Podcast. Or no, because so many are already taken. Sure. So that's how I ended up getting that name because of that style. And also because it's like one of my favorite styles because it's so many like suplexes and like, kicks and stuff like that which is like like I always like like I mentioned earlier I always had the dream to actually do it myself yeah and like up until like recently I was like like even though like I'm probably pushing the age range of like what a wrestler can be to start Mm -hmm. like until I was like engaged I'm like this is what I'm doing yeah and my mom's like you didn't have a backup plan with your life you just wanted to be a wrestler I'm like Duh. I've yeah. been telling you this since I was four. You thought I was playing? <laughs> the only things I've ever wanted to be in my life were like an actor or a pro wrestler. Right. And I just... Which is technically kind of the same job. Yeah. I mean... It's just an actor... Uh, an actor isn't as much of an athlete at all the time. Yeah. Like only certain actors. But wrestlers are 
one hundred percent actors. Yeah, and one hundred percent athletes. Yeah, like yeah. Um, I had to explain it once uh, as being painful dancing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because like my like I was explaining it again to Felicia, my wife. Yeah, and she was like, "Okay, that makes sense." And then literally two days later, we saw the wrestler that I was talking about. Yeah, and I freaked out. <laughs> Come to find out, he's like five foot eight. Oh wow! But he's on WWE now, so that's awesome. And I got a picture. That's real. His cool. name's Ricochet. Ricochet, okay. Like from Mucha Lucha. Yeah. And like he, like like I say on my podcast all the time, he's killing it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that type of wrestling, like that Japanese inspired wrestling, is like my thing. Yeah. So I talk about sure. that a lot in the podcast. This upcoming episode that I haven't released yet is going to be like. Um, my Mount Rushmore mm -hmm. of wrestlers. Nice. But I had to really do some research on Mount Rushmore. Because yeah. everybody has an idea of it, but they don't really remember how many people are on it. Really? It, how many people are on Mount Rushmore? Four. Yeah, I didn't know that until you I didn't was, know that? <laughs> until I was today years old. <laughs> oh so, my god. I'm like, there's five people on it, right, babe? And she's like, I don't I don't know. So really? We at, we I thought this was common knowledge. I mean, I knew there was like four or five. Yeah. I, I just didn't really because Aside from that, besides like uh, Washington, Lincoln, and Roosevelt, who's the other guy? I don't know. Hamilton. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Aaron Burr, I don't know. Like, you know. <laughs> it's not Obama, I know that. It's not Obama. <laughs> That's so hilarious. it's irrelevant to me. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, yeah, that reminds me. No one knew about Alexander Hamilton until this freaking play. Oh, yeah. So. 100%. Yeah. Like, hardly anyone, unless you're, like, a history teacher or, like, things like that, or Oddly before, enough, before I Hamilton. History. I just don't know names. Yeah, but, like, before Hamilton, no one knew that Aaron Burr killed Alexander Hamilton. Like, exactly. no one. Or why it happened yeah. or, like, anything. Now it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so dramatic how it happened. And it's like, it's always been that, like, you know? Yeah. And it's the, you know who's getting excited about that? It's high school and middle school girls. Yeah, absolutely. And But they don't want to go to history class. I'll just go watch Hamilton for $500. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I learn from you for free when I can exactly. pay $500 to see somebody rap it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm like, babe. I know you're the art teacher. Maybe you should rap your art stuff. Dude. Rap that, color theory. That play is literally every teacher I hate. Like, if a teacher <laughs> if a teacher came in and was like, guys, I'm going to play the acoustic guitar and, and, <laughs> and sing about the states in this song that I just wrote on the acoustic. And they're like, first, there's Florida. That starts with an F. And then you go to Alabama. That starts with an A. Like, that's Hamilton, dude. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, Hamilton is the is the teacher trying to be cool. Pythagorean <laughs> theorem on ukulele. Yeah. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You're like, <laughs> is that the Pythagorean theorem? I don't know. <laughs> I have dyscalculia or dyscalculia, <laughs> so you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> I just remember uh, PEMDAS is like the only thing, you know, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which is hilarious because I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Parentheses. Uh a, uh, ex extensions is it? Is, it's not extend. You are getting the most blank stare from me right now. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> when it comes to math, that is the like. There's things that I know more about than most people. Yeah, and math is the complete opposite of that for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, to be fair, all I've got is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah, <laughs> That's all I really got. That's that, like Roy G. Biv with That colors. addition and subtraction, you know, yeah. like very basic addi uh, addi addition and subtraction. Yeah. But yeah. So where can people find the podcast? Uh, it's Twitter and Facebook is the main place. I think it's strong at Strong Style Pod 3. Yeah. Because even though there's not a Strong Style Podcast but mine, somebody is camping on my Twitter. Yeah. So I'm like, I guess I had to stay, take Strong Style Pod 3 because 3 is a cool number I yeah guess. it's and chance then, the rapper yeah exactly you know? and then strong style podcast on facebook yeah Pretty and it's on fun. it's on like itunes and it's spotify somehow some way i've been able to get it on just about everything cool so spotify uh itunes google play um i've been trying to like it's so like gra uh, like 
like grassroots is that the word yeah kind of, I, yeah, I mean, like, depends like, on what you're trying to say or, but it, sure yeah <laughs> it, it is a word though yeah it is a okay word. that's what i was trying to figure out um but no yeah it's very like me in my bedroom talking about wrestling yeah. for an hour so yeah. if that's something that you like then it, it's a good show yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> i like talking about wrestling i like talking about wrestling with other people Unfortunately, thus far, I haven't been able to lock down other people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we, you know, spoiler alert, if you're listening, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to be on it at some point. Yes. You know, I'm, oh, I'm completely down. I don't know much about it, but I'm willing to learn. I am it's so, so ready to talk about like attitude era, like 90s. Yeah. I'm polarity. so ready. I'm so ready to learn because I love, I know basic broad strokes about that stuff. So just... To like preview, what is that basic broad story? Is like Stone Cold. Like I know who Stone. He is? Yeah, I know Stone Cold. Like I know the NWO era. Okay. I know Evil Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I know. I know Goldberg. I know Sting. Um, even old like WCW, WWF. Do you remember stuff. Razor Ramon? I know the name and I know the face, but I don't know and like his moves or anything. So the thing, one of my like last things I'll mention of wrestling. Uh, Razor Ramon as a character is so intriguing to me yeah. because he, number one, is not even remotely la- Hispanic. Yeah. Uh, Scott Hall is the guy's real name. Um, oh, yeah. I and know. Didn't he go as Scott Hall for a little in bit? In WCW. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. But before that, he was Razor Ramon, which was basically, he just pretended to be Scarface. What and the he would throw uh, a toothpick at people's face before attacking them. And it was, and he just like he would do the voice, and I'm trying to remember it in my head so I don't sound like an idiot. Because there's a couple, <laughs> there's like the main wrestling voice I can do okay is Macho Man. Sure. And it, I can do it, but it hurts. Yeah. Well, that's how you're doing it right. Because it's like you're <laughs> you're inhaling and exhaling and talking. Yep. And trying not to poop. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The much. Joe man and it's so much in the diction yeah so it, it, it really hurts is. i literally did it when felicia and i were macho man and miss elizabeth for halloween yeah the entire night yeah and people were trying to have like regular conversations with lance and i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna do it in the voice like can i just talk to somebody else and you just talk his bone saw from spider-man like, <laughs> exactly bone saw is ready it's gonna like, be the same exact like voice people didn't know it was macho man randy exactly. savage like he wore we the know. same outfit as he <laughs> yeah. did when he was wcw macho the same like, see-through everyone knows shirt. it's you randy <laughs> exactly did you know he did a rap album yes i do absolutely hulk hogan you're a punk yeah and uh and what's it called hulk hogan had uh had an album as well. He also had a pasta restaurant. Did he? No way. Pasta Mania. Of course he did. <laughs> of course. He's wearing like a chef hat slash bandana. Of course it's he the, did. It's my favorite thing. Man, this has been an episode. Where can people find you, Lance? I'm pretty low key when it comes to social media. Yeah. Um, That's actually something I really admire about you. Yeah. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at LB Knows Wrestling. Mm hmm. W R A S S L I N and uh Facebook Lance Brooks. Nice. Like, that's really it. Like Instagram and you can look at my Pinterest if you want. That's pretty <laughs> but that's on Facebook too now, but that's it. I can't do the whole Instagram thing. It's too much. Oh, dude, I have one, and I and I do it, but I hate it. And Instagram <laughs> was not good for me because I just felt like I would go down rabbit holes for hours when yeah. I had it, and yeah. I'm just like, I'm already not the most productive person if left to my own devices. Yeah. So I can't do like Instagram because like I have to like limit myself to even when I can even use Pinterest. Like Pinterest <laughs> is solely for the bathroom. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> like anything other than that, like if I, I I'll just be on it for hours. <laughs> looking at coffee shops <laughs> yeah fair enough and of course listen to the strong style podcast you can get that on apple podcasts on google podcasts everywhere that you can listen to podcasts so for me you can follow me on instagram at mike valdez on twitter at i am mike valdez you can go to who is mike com to find out the answer to that question we have a couple of shows coming up we have uh, the Mike Valdez and the Noise Show is coming up the 28th of this month. 
and that is going to be on a Saturday. We're going to be at Next Door at CNI in Fort Lauderdale. And then in October, I'm going to be in Orlando doing stand up at the Geek Easy on October 3rd. So all our, all my Orlando friends, come by, hang out and laugh with us. And that's it, man. Subscribe, tell your friends about this podcast so we can grow this family. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great week. Bye besties.